Hi everyone, this video is about the extracellular matrix. Let's start by talking about what it's like to be unicellular versus multicellular. If you consider a unicellular organism, one that's only made of one individual cell, maybe something that's in the domain bacteria or archaea or possibly a protist, life is going to be pretty straightforward for that one cell. It only needs to look out for its own survival. It doesn't necessarily need to communicate with other cells. It just needs to worry about that one cell. But if you then think about multicellular organisms such as yourself, things get a little more complicated. If we have many cells all living together that are working for the greater good of the collective, then they're going to need some additional things. They're going to need some way to attach to each other to make sure the organism stays in one piece. And they're also going to need some way to communicate with each other to make sure that each cell is doing its proper job. So this starts very early on in the existence of a multicellular organism. Here's an image of an embryo of a very primitive fish-like creature, and each of these brown blobs is one cell. And you can see that already, very early on in its existence and its development, these cells are firmly attached to each other. And although you can't see it here, they're already communicating with each other constantly to make sure that each cell is doing its job. So animal cells in multicellular organisms are connected by a complex system that allows them to connect and communicate with each other, and this is the extracellular matrix. Wanted to let you know that in this instance, that prefix extra is there to mean outside. So this is something that is primarily outside of the cell. Let's take a look. Here's a diagram showing the extracellular matrix and it's made up of a web of proteins and carbohydrates at the cell surface, and it's located outside of the plasma membrane. So in this diagram, you can see the plasma membrane here, that lipid bilayer, the individual phospholipids here, and you can see some of these blue proteins that extend through the membrane. You can also see some cytoskeletal fibers in here, such as the microfilaments that help support the membrane. Then if we go to the outside, this is all the extracellular matrix. So we have substances such as collagen, which is a protein. And right here, we've got some little pieces of fibronectin, which is a glycoprotein. And then this feathery stuff is this proteoglycan complex, which is pretty complicated. It's got polysaccharides, uh, proteins, and smaller carbohydrates as well. So there's a lot going on there. One of the cool things we can do in biology is use fluorescent stains to mark different parts of cells and then look at them under the microscope. In this image here, these sort of goldish blobs are the nuclei of individual cells. The red parts are the cytoskeletal fibers, and all of the blue stuff is extracellular matrix. So you can see it's this weird web-like structure of all these different molecules outside of the cell. Now, even though these molecules are outside, they are connected to the cytoskeletal fibers through those transmembrane proteins. So you can see here this proteoglycan fiber that's connected to the fibronectin on top of a protein, and that protein in turn is connected to the microfilaments inside the cell. So in a way, it connects the outside to the inside of the cell. And this enables animal cells to attach to each other, grab onto each other, and also to communicate with each other, send information back and forth. In addition to that, the extracellular matrix helps hold tissues together. For example, if you think about your muscle cells, they're constantly getting pulled and pulling on each other, but rather than just coming apart and all letting go, the extracellular matrix is what holds them together so they can keep doing their job. One other thing that the extracellular matrix does is it supports and protects the plasma membrane. So in multicellular animals, this matrix is doing all these different things for the cell. In plants, it's a little bit different. As you know, they have a cell wall, and that cell wall is going to perform some of these functions, such as support and protection. So that's everything you need to know about the extracellular matrix. Until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other.